Hey there, everybody. This is Micah McLaughlin, and I'm going to be leading you through the bioenergetics practice today for the leaving pattern. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what I mean when I say the leaving pattern, what I'm speaking of is uh, what we call Reiki and character structures. Or in our community here, we've all been reading the book, The Five Personality Patterns, which uh, it's just a different name for the same thing. And in that book, it talks about, you know, there's these five basic strategies that we all employ. And we, we developed these strategies when we were younger. And there were ways when we were feeling overwhelmed by stimuli, by emotion, uh, by trauma, that we would actually go into a way of buffering that overwhelming feeling. And for each of those five personality patterns or ranking character structures, there's a way in which we moved our attention away from the distressing feeling or the sensation or the emotion, and we moved it to something else as a way to separate, to numb, to tamp down on that experience. And so for today, we're gonna to be working with people who tend to run the leaving pattern. And this is the earliest developmental stage and it forms either in the utero or the first about six months of life. Uh, but what happens in this particular pattern is the movement from up into spirit world, right? To bring that energy down, to bring ourself down into a body, into a physical body on the earth plane doesn't happen. There's, there's some issue with that developmental stage. And so this can really leave us in a feeling of being stuck out of our body, up in our imagination, up in maybe creativity, up in another realm, um, even up in fantasy, uh, but not to be properly rooted in our physical body. And so we can go through life feeling maybe like we don't belong uh, or like life is too overwhelming or too much. Um, there could be a lot of sensitivity in the nervous system. Uh, it can be a sense of feeling like we don't fit in here. And so, you know, for those of us who've done this pattern as a way of um, coping, not just with our early developmental trauma, but other distressing events, um, we can really create a situation in which we're, we're floating around and we're, we're doing life, but we're not actually in our physical body. We're not creating our physical body as this place of home or safety or security to go out into the world. And that creates a lot of, uh, a lot of charge and a lot of block up in the ocular band. So this area right around here. Uh, and it also creates a lack of big, full, vital flow of life energy moving through our bodies. And because of that, we don't get a lot of sensation or we don't get a lot of vitality moving, especially to our hands and our feet, but also just the entire lower half of our body. So in today's practice, we're going to work to uh, open up the ocular band, uh, open up the wrists and the ankles, and to actually start to engage this full amount of energy in our physical body, being here, being now, reclaiming our body, taking back uh, this life of ours. So... It doesn't matter whether you do the leaving pattern or don't do the leaving pattern as one of your main safety strategies. This is a great practice for everybody. Um, but specifically for those of you who resonate with that with that um, safety strategy, that personality pattern, you're going to find this one particularly useful. So here we go. This one is going to be about, it's about 35 minutes long, and then we're going to sit and relax at the end and feel our bodies. And so you'll want 46 dings at 45 seconds if you decide that you wanted to... Um, follow along with me that's great but if you want to set up your own music that's great uh, in the section below somewhere I will post the music the playlist for this so if you want to just dial that in on your own phone go for it for not if not then follow along with me here we go we're gonna start standing there's gonna be a warm-up section of this practice then we're gonna go into the meat and potatoes of the practice and then we're going to a cool down section so enjoy and like always if any of the sensations or emotions become too distressing, then you can always take a break. You can always switch the breath in through your nose if you need to. Oh, one thing I do want to show you before we get started and I get down on the floor here is we're going to be using uh, what we call the startle breath. And this is a breath uh, and that really is the breath we use when we're startled and it just looks like this. <gasps> and I'm going to ask you to fill your lungs to about 100% full and then just exhale like the 10% out, and then inhale on the startle breath, filling that last 10% of your lung capacity. And you can't really see it, but here, if I stand up here, this area right here below the sternum, right, consider that to be a really strong stress catching point. And so most of us are blocked down here. So when you do that startle breath, really breathe underneath your rib cage and into this. 
Okay, good. So here we go. You can go ahead and we're gonna start standing. And take a second just to connect with yourself, just to remember why you decided to jump into this practice today. Find your breath, find connection to your feet. I start with warming up here. You know, lift your wrists up and you can't see, but my ankles are also getting pulled up here. You're pulling your toes up to the ceiling. Your shoulders are gonna go up and your mouth is gonna open wide and your eyes are gonna open wide. And this is sort of like that moment, maybe at birth where you're like, oh shit, I'm here, right? This, is like, this isn't the womb that I'm used to. Just shaking, shaking your shoulders, making sure your shoulders lift up, but really wiggling and shaking your entire body. So for all of us, we had to leave this nice, comfortable womb, come down and hit these bright lights, oh, these smells and the noises. It was a bit of a shock to our system. So that's what we're working on with this practice is for all of us, whether we were on the leaving pattern or not, we've all had to go from spirit realm into the womb and then onto this earth plane, and that's, it's a lot, okay? So we know in this pattern, all the energy runs up and out the body, away from the physical body, away from the earth. So that's what we're doing here, pulling wrists up, really pulling your toes up, shoulders up, mouth and eyes as wide open as you can get them. Big, full breath in through your mouth. You're not escaping these sensations, you're feeling your body from the inside, and you're going to your edge. How high can you get those shoulders? How high can, open can you get your eyes? You're gonna go ahead and shake that out, including your ankles and your wrist. Let your shoulders come up a little bit and drop. You don't have to control this process of shaking things out. Right? It's not about doing it perfectly. It's about oh, responding to your body, doing what feels useful, doing what feels beneficial. Right now we're just warming our body up. This is not a practice that's terribly physically demanding, but it is sort of psychologically and even spiritually demanding for most people. They, they find it to be quite an intense practice, even though the movements are very, very small. Wrists up, ankles up, shoulders up, mouth and eyes wide open. Really feel into your body. shake it out one last time. So in all of our bioenergetics practice, we're creating an open mouth breath, big, deep, full inhalation, exhalation falls out of your body. For some of you, if you start to get into some dizziness or tingling or the sensations start to be too much emotionally or physically, you can always just drop your breath and go into a breath through your nose, which will bring the charge down in your body. But for the most part, when we're doing this practice, unless otherwise noted, we're breathing in and out through our mouths. And 
we're gonna continue still warming up our body and we're gonna go into bow and arch. So bow, your hands are gonna reach up, pelvic floor finding its way out into the room, squeezing in the back side of your heart space, opening up the front of your heart space. Inviting your spine to find some flexibility, to find some curvature at your spine, to feel your rib cage come out, and just breathing in your belly and your heart space. And coming out of here, if you want to bring your toes, your feet in a little bit closer, moving into arch. In a forward fold, relaxing your neck, your shoulders, leaning forward on your toes, and then feeling your tailbone as if there's a rope connected to it. Just pulling your tailbone, your low back up, really letting go. Legs are nice and straight, but they're not locked. Just a little bit shy of being locked, and you're, you're leaning forward on your toes, taking some of that weight off your heels. And back up again for, for bow. These are shorter timers, because we're just warming up our bodies. Those of you who want to go a little deeper, just increase your breath. If your breath deepens, you'll deepen your experience inside your body. Coming back to arch again. Arch posture is really one of surrender. Can you let gravity just pull you down? Can you just surrender to the earth below you? Taking a break, not having to push or strive, just simply to feel, to breathe, to let go. curve in your spine, especially in your low spine. Last arch here. Just see how much you can let go. So from here, we're gonna go into the bulk of the practice, moving away from the warm up. I'm just gonna adjust my camera here. You've got a whole ding here. You've got a whole ding between our standing postures and our laying down postures. So do take your time. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be moving 
our ankles, our wrists, our eyeballs, and eventually our neck, all around in a big circle. So in this first one, we're gonna start with our ankles pointing down to the left, our feet, or our wrists down to the left. You're gonna see my head go down to the left, and you're gonna have my eyes look down to the left, okay? And with this, we're gonna add in a startle breath, so fill your belly, let out just a little bit, and then the startle. <gasps> your wrists and your ankles and your eyeballs all counterclockwise. Your head can come back to neutral, but everything else is just rotating and you're taking them as far as you can go. You can go at whatever speed feels good. You just want to go at a pace where you can really feel the movement. You can really feel behind your eyes. You can really feel your ankles and your wrists. And sometimes if we go too fast, we can't feel our internal experience. Breath can just be normal, in and out, full breath, breath through your mouth. From here, wrists and ankles and eyeballs down and let your head follow. Really engaging the back of your neck there, maybe even the back of your heart space, and then that startle breath again. Rotating head back to neutral, rotating eyes, ankles, and wrists, all counterclockwise. And everything moving down into the right, including your neck, your eyeballs, and then that stroke. Rotating counterclockwise, including your eyes. You know, in this one, it's easy to get focused on our wrists and our ankles and forget about our eyeballs, but in a lot of ways, releasing our ocular band is the point of this practice. So really, if we can only do one thing or two things, you know, then make sure the ocular band is one of them. Make sure your eyeballs are really rotating around as far as they can go. You'll start to feel that dull ache in the back of your head when you hit your edge of where your eyes can rotate to, and that's that's good. That's sort of the space we want to be playing in is touching the edges of discomfort. Let's go ahead and rest and breathe and feel inside your body. Just observe.
Two, keep your breath moving deeply and fully. Exact same thing, but now we're going up and to the left. Let your wrists and your ankles go up and left. Put your eyes up in the left first, and then let your neck follow your eyes. You can turn your head if you want, but you're turning and looking up. Head back to neutral, rotating everything but clockwise this time. and ankles up, eyeballs go up it's to 12 o'clock, and then go ahead and kind of pull your head up and then push the back side of your skull into the ground a little bit. You can squeeze your shoulders up a little bit if you wanted to. It's quite an unpleasant feeling for most people. That's how we know we're getting into those places that need to be felt, that need to be broken into, opened up. Rotating everything clockwise, your head can go back to neutral. Check in with your eyeballs. Are they still rotating as far as they can go all the way around? A lot to pay attention to. Are you able to feel everything happening in your body? See a lot of people do this when they start to get their arms going, which is fine, but we're really working on our wrists and our ankles. So not your whole arm, just your wrists, just finding more space at the joints. Up into the right. Head back to neutral, rotating everything clockwise again.
go ahead, just rest. Feel your body, keep your breath deep and full. time through the whole rotation down to the left ankles wrists eyeballs followed by your neck startle breath Rotating counterclockwise. Some of you may notice that some of these postures, especially when we're pointing in one direction, can really create some Charlie horses or a tendency to Charlie horse. You don't have to let yourself go all the way on the Charlie horse. Uh, you can stop short of that and just stay right on your edge. Or for some of you who might want to play around with what feeling a Charlie horse and letting it kind of unwind through your body feels like, that's okay too, but it is pretty intense. So. Don't feel like you need to have a Charlie horse in order for this to work. You can stay on the edge. Okay. Letting your wrists down, ankles down, head and eyeballs. Neutral, rotating everything counterclockwise. down and to the right. Rotating counterclockwise again.
rest and feel your body from the inside out. Let your breath take you deeper. to the left, letting your neck and head follow. If you want a little more sensation, really pull your fingers down. Curl them a bit more. You get your fingertips to kind of curl back and touch the ground. Rotating everything clockwise this time. looking up and back and this one if you want to squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears a little bit more or push your head down into the floor you have a bit more sensation Rotating clockwise, making sure your eyeballs are still going as far as they can around the clock. And the same with your wrists, the same with your ankles. It's easy to sort of space out and disconnect from our body. Keep coming back, keep feeling your body the entire time. gonna come back and just rest feel big full breaths into your body feel your whole body from your toes all the way to the top of your head
from here, we're gonna go into the cool down phase of the practice. You're just gonna start by lifting your right arm up and you're just gonna shake as if you're trying to shake your fingers or your hand right off your arm. Keep breathing fully in and out through your mouth. You're gonna let that shaking come down to your forearm. Eventually into your elbow. Trying to let go of the idea that you're shaking your arm and you really start to embrace the idea that your arm is, is shaking you, that your arm knows how it wants to move, knows how it wants to unwind. Bringing that shaking all the way down to your shoulder. And then the same thing with your left hand, starting at your fingertips. Down to your wrist and your forearm. And eventually all the way down to your elbow and your shoulder and then let go. Can you just let go to your arm, your body, shaking and moving the way that it wants to? Same thing with now with your right foot starting just your toes, your ankle. And then letting it move into your, your calf, your knee, and eventually all the way down to your thigh and your hip. Especially if you've done some tremoring bios in the past, this may be easier to allow your body just to take over. And if not, if that's not happening, then just keep shaking. Follow what feels right and good for your body. And then the same thing with your left foot. Put your feet back on the floor. And you're just gonna gently lift your tailbone off of the ground, about an inch, maybe two. And just very gentle rocking back and forth. Just to integrate all this work you just did in your whole body. And again, if a little bit of tremoring wants to take over, then just let it, let it unfold. And if not, then just gently shake your tailbone from side to side. So that's the last ding of this practice. Some of you may want to stay here with your hips up, just letting the tremoring happen. In fact, if the tremoring takes over and you want to stay here for even 10, 20, 30 minutes, it's a really great way to let your body unwind let trauma and conditioning move out of your body, the armory in places to start to clear without having to get stuck in story or work too hard. So you get to decide how long you want to stay in this posture, what would feel good to you. You might even find you could just set your tailbone down and the tremoring will still continue. So however much time allows, you're just going to stay just tremoring, shaking. Should you need to move on, then do give yourself five or 10 minutes just to rest before you move on with your day. This can be a quite a jarring practice. So give yourself time to, just to rest, to feel your body and um, yeah, enjoy the new spaces that you created for you. Cheers, good work everybody.